The next room. No concept. Yeah, come on in. This is all part of a collection that I have never gotten to in about 15 years. And the owner of the Clear Awards was in a drug deal. They burnt down his townhouse. And there, folks, is films that I have just pulled out of sales films, commercials, regional films, spot advertisements, a great history of television that uh, I've never been able to get to. 1939. Television made its official public debut. The New York World's Fair, whose theme, the world of tomorrow, became the world of today. The TV cameras focused on Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the first president ever televised. The first baseball game ever televised, August 1939. The national political conventions of 1940, another milestone for television. Television cameramen, lighting experts, set designers, writers and directors were experimenting, studying and learning the new techniques of the new medium. Do I look like I'm going to fall over? I am, believe me. Thank you very much. I just want to tell you I'm very thrilled to be back here once again for Frigidaire to grab a little of that quick frozen money. I've, uh, uh, this is my third, I've had three shots on television. Fortunately, they all miss me, but I must say... <laughs> I must say, I'm getting used to this racket. I'm beginning to like it. I mean it. The camera angles and the, the makeup, the lighting and all the technique. It's something. You know, it takes time. After all, Faye Emerson wasn't built in a day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And we welcome you once again on behalf of Boulevard, uh, the people who make such wonderful watches. And isn't it wonderful to be able to sit back and relax and watch the picture that comes out on the screen in your television set? And if he doesn't come through the door soon, we'll run into the... Ah, Castle Films. This is what people used to take home watch on their uh, 16 millimeter projectors. All these are 16 millimeter films, 400 footers, 30 minute films, shorts. At New York's federal building, alleged overlord of gambling, Frank Costello arrives to face the senatorial gambling probe. You must have in your mind some things you've done that you can speak off to your credit as an American citizen. If so, what are they? Paid by tax. Oh. Mike Wallace interview with Hugh Hefner, Playboy After Dark. This is Nightbeat, Mike Wallace. This is rare, original negatives. Just how did Hugh Hefner start Playboy? What kind of a magazine is it? What kind of a man is Hugh Hefner? Stay tuned. We'll turn to the man himself. Good evening, I'm Mike Wallace. The show is Nightbeat. Do you think that President Eisenhower, Mr. Marshall, has done all that he can thus far to further the cause of integration? Well, I do not think that President Eisenhower has done anywhere near what he could have done. And I think that his failure to do so does not help us at all, especially when we realize that as a result of the failure of the good forces to take over, we have allowed these other forces like the white citizens' councils and the Klan to threaten and intimidate good people. At the same time, I have a problem of, come on in, having to move the next group of films. All these are 16 millimeter films, 400 footers, 30 minute films, shorts. And then of course, there's from so much moving around and people sending me stuff, this is like un unbelievable, disgraceful. I know, it's not easy looking at what's happened to this collection over the years. In fact, that room has been packed up, listed, and stored away. It's really raining. Yahoo! I get the trick. Hey, you're just the silly rabbit. I am? You are. I just got the kids. You guys are spoiled out there because you're getting the best image quality possible. 
and I've spent over 20 years with the Museum of Television and Radio in New York City doing just that. Real Hershey's Coco! But now I have a problem, my videotape is decomposing. So is the museum's material. And of the thousands of hours I have, what do you think the museum has in their collection? Even more, needing your support to help save the early days of TV history. When I grow up, I want to tell everybody about the wonderful new world of ports. Hello, everybody. But I do need to find some patron of the arts that wants to take this collection and do something exciting with it. First business for Nixon, however, was opening the United States Fair, a spontaneous show put on by Nixon and Khrushchev at the opening. They carried on a highly undiplomatic debate astonishing reporters and spectators alike as they watch themselves at the television exhibit. And will be uh, carried at... Neither took offense. Instead, seemed to enjoy the reaction they got. <laughs> lots of books out there, lots of documentation, lots of paper, and a lot of these authors did not have the films themselves to see to study. To you know, about 12 years ago, I happened to be dining in a certain New York cafe. And in the floor show was a very clever young man by the name of Jackie Gleason. Well, I thought that he showed a great deal of promise, and I signed him for several appearances on Kate's radio show. Now, as I remember, he did very well by us in those appearances. As a matter of fact, the guy was very sensational. Well, of course, Jackie's star has continued to ascend ever since those days. He now has his own great big television show, and I hear he is negotiating a very fabulous new contract for himself next year with NBC. Message just came in over the wire for you, sir. Thank you. NBC News. Yeah. Discontinue search. Return to home base immediately. Official orders awaiting your arrival. Ah, ah, Fenwick, wait a minute. What's the matter? Where's Fenwick? Fenwick! <laughs> Just as important as saving my film collection and working with the Museum of Television and Radio is helping to document the history of this medium itself. And today's cameras, as people have been emailing me, what camera am I using to, go, to shoot on location? This is it. The Sony HD, the new HD Sony cameras are remarkable. This is the professional version. And you can go anywhere and shoot anything. And if you can't wire somebody up with a wireless mic, this mic is terrific, but of course wireless helps a lot for long shots but for documenting up close, the quality is outstanding. Barn dance, 35 millimeter. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the barn dance. Bill Betty, Bill expecting you. And with today's programs and technologies, you have everything you need at consumer prices that the professionals are using at the astronomical prices. But there's no difference between film and television. It's just telling stories with images. And if you tell a good story, people will be there to watch it. And I have plenty of images here of other people's works that need to be studied and enjoyed. Anyway, thanks for tuning in tonight's episode of TVDays.com. And next week, hey, take a look. Chunk, chunk, big chunk. Chunky. Big, big, big chunk. Chunky. Open wide for Chunky! The thickest nickel chocolate bar in the USA. Milk chocolate, raisins, Brazil nuts, cashews. Chunky, extra thick for extra flavor. Open wide for Chunky! Chunky! Out of all the candy bars in the world, only two have the honor to be made at the World's Fair. Old Nick and Chocolate Sponge. Through the glass walls of the famous candy factory at the fair, see the nuts and caramel of Old Nick crunched in a curtain of real milk chocolate. And watch the light, crunchy honeycomb of chocolate sponge dip under a cascade of elegant chocolate. The only candy bars made at the World's Fair. Enjoy them anywhere. Old Nick and Chocolate Sponge.